Thank you for joining the session on Defender for IoT Architecture. And during this session, we're going to be covering some of the market drivers, what IoT and industrial IoT challenges are for CISOs, and Defender of IoT Architecture, as well as a sample with uh, Triton, which was an industrial IoT uh, attack. So why do we have um, cybersecurity is now a board level concern with IoT? in operational technology. Part of it is because of digital transformation and IT and OT connectivity have expanded significantly to um, have multiple different attack surfaces. There are now billions of IoT devices out there, um, some with insecure footprints that can be easily compromised. The next element is OT cyber attacks on production. Um, they really impact the revenue and the safety of the organization. And lastly, uh, enterprise SOCs today virtually have no visibility into IoT and OT risk. So the board is very concerned about security postures as it relates to their business. And when we think about industrial cyber attacks, they equal financial risk. There's a number of different uh, companies, as you see on this chart, that were forced to stop their production plants uh, in North America, Europe, and Asia. Um, based on some malware, uh, WannaCry in the beginning, um, Locker Goga is another uh, attack, and a tremendous amount of losses to NotPetya uh, as well. And the Triton attack caused uh, a lot of uh, revenue uh, impact as well. But if we look at the top industrial and IoT challenges for CISOs, um, there's a number of them. Certainly not a complete list, but you can see up here that um, IT and OT are convergent to support the business need. And in the past, we had security by obscurity uh, with air gap systems and things like that just aren't relevant anymore. There's a lot of interconnected devices. You look at IoT sensors and they're cloud connected, um, smart metering, things like that um, have a big impact as uh, IT and OT are converging. Um, the next element is IT devices cannot support agents in some cases or other security controls. So you need a different way to monitor and to look at what is normal and abnormal behavior. Uh, another item is that IoT devices are dramatically increasing, as I mentioned, the attack surface for the enterprise, right? Um, it's stated that there are gonna be more IoT devices than uh, PCs and laptops in the coming years. So this is another footprint that needs to be secured. Lack of visibility by the IT and security teams um, in general, the plant engineering team and the OT environment is invisible to IT unless they put in um, monitoring systems and things like that. And there's a cultural divide. So part of these uh, elements where the plant doesn't know specifically what devices they have or how they're connected. So visibility is really another concern. Another element is complexity and heterogeneous uh, in nature. When you look at a manufacturing line, there's not just one uh, specific automation vendor that is used for the entire plant or the entire design. So uh, complexity and uh, heterogeneous nature is definitely an element. Another piece is unpatched uh, window systems because the automation vendors, when they build their engineering workstation, HMIs and historians, they build it with a specific application in mind and it wasn't um, really viable to go through all the windows patching like that that occurred so that they would certify on every release. So this is really a big challenge for the OT environment. And lastly, um, it's a challenge to get IT security personnel, let alone ICS security personnel. And so they're finding like a needle in the haystack in some cases to find those security personnel. But with Defender for IoT, it fits within the Microsoft portfolio within Azure Security Center, within the IoT solution, right? And Defender for IoT will forward the alerts and alarms up to Azure Sentinel. And we'll talk about that in the coming slides. But from an architecture perspective, it's simple, it's non-invasive, and it works at the network layer monitoring. And so what happens is there's a span port that is connected off of the network switch where the network uh, packets are captured. And you see the CyberX uh, appliance, the Defender for IoT appliance, and it could be used either virtual or a physical appliance. And essentially it's stripping off the network headers where it gets to the application layer. 
And this is where we do the deep packet inspection, right? So that we can build the topology maps, identify what are these devices. This is an icon for a PLC, for example, and this is an icon for an engineering workstation. Um, so these are just the uh, devices that are identified passively off the network. And from there, we're gonna forward our information to Azure Security Center, or you could have a local web console uh, on-prem as well. And we'll give you the visibility of the assets of what's on your network, what are the vulnerabilities and the threats associated with that. And lastly, we can forward the information and alerts over to a SIM or SOAR, like um, Azure Security Center, uh, as well as uh, Sentinel in other uh, SIMs like Splunk and so forth. In addition, we can forward the alerts to the SIM or SOAR platform, Azure Security. In addition, we can forward the alerts to Sentinel, for example, as the SIM or SOAR system that could take further actions. So these are the challenges that are addressed by Defender for IoT. And we can deal with asset discovery. So we'll identify what assets are on the network and you can easily implement uh, segmentation and zero trust policies. We'll look and identify what is the risk and vulnerable uh, vulnerabilities associated with these devices. So you can answer questions like, what is the risk to our crown jewels in the environment? We'll do continuous monitoring and threat uh, intelligence, right? So we'll know how IT and OT threats are on the network and if we quickly have to respond to them. In addition, since we're monitoring the OT network, we'll understand if there's operational efficiencies that can be gained, if there are misconfigured devices or if there's a compromise within the, the network as it sits today as well as unifying IT and OT monitoring and governance by helping get visibility into the SOC so that the people in the information security world can understand what's happening in the OT uh, networks as well. So those are some ways that we'll be able to address for client. And if we look at a sample uh, attack, Triton was a recent attack on a petrochemical facility and it had a deadly goal. Its goal was not to simply just destroy the data like you see in some IT related attacks, but it was meant to sabotage the firm's operation and to trigger an explosion. Here's the kill chain for Triton, for example. <clears throat> and in the previous videos, these reference numbers, L0, L1, are referencing the Purdue model. Um, so in the overview, you, we went through the architecture and network design, but you see at the corporate network at L4, essentially somebody stole OT credentials uh, and compromised the workstation on the enterprise network. From there, they were able to hack through the firewalls and compromise the engineering workstation on the OT environment, and they deployed PC malware. And from there, they installed a RAT, a remote access Trojan, on the PLC, and their goal was to disable the safety system. And they used the native TriStation protocol in order to reprogram the PLC. And their intent was to disable the safety system and to launch a second cyber attack to blow up the facility. So if we look at some of the alerts and in, in the timeline of what we could do with a, a Microsoft solution, Windows Defender uh, ATP could generate some alerts and send them over to Azure Sentinel. Um, the Defender for IoT has the ability to look at anomalies and so we could simulate some of the anomalies and this would be an unauthorized RDP session from the corporate network into the engineering workstation. From there, the engineering workstation was scanning the environment, trying to look at what protocols are out there. Remember, the hackers are trying to uh, do an asset inventory and discover what devices are out there. The port scan, then they identified what the specific protocol were used. From there, they did a programming update. And with a programming update, you can get alerts getting into Azure Sentinel. And from there, we can understand that there's an illegal function code. So all of these different alerts will be forwarded over to Sentinel. And you can see the traditional IT security alerts, uh, as well as the OT uh, alerts will be forwarded in. And this is where Sentinel can start to converge 
and give you a single pane of glass within IT and OT. And in addition to that, playbooks will be generated so that you understand the OT related alerts that are happening here with PLC programming and port scans and so forth or illegal function codes. This is where you have the OT playbooks so that Sentinel gives you that um, expertise out of the box. Okay, and then in addition, CyberX also supports the NIST uh, framework. And within the NIST framework, there are five core pillars of identifying what is the attack, preventing it, detecting it, and responding to it, and then the ability to recover. And you can see all the different areas of how Defender for IoT can help you in these particular cases to support the NIST framework. There's also flexible deployment options where we can have 100% on-prem sensors that would be able to report to the on-prem SIMs like Splunk and QRadar and so forth, or hybrid, where in some cases customers may deploy uh, sensors on-prem managed locally or connected to cloud-based SIMs like Azure Sentinel. And then if we go 100% cloud, then we're able to use Azure Security Center and connect it to Azure uh, Sentinel in the cloud. So very good flexible deployment options. So if we were to summarize why we would use Defender for IoT, we would see easy to deploy. There's no agents, rules, or signatures, and uh, we have a patent on machine learning uh, capability. Support for all the major industrial protocols and equipment like GE, Rockwell, Schneider, Emerson, ABB, and the list goes on. And then the ability to integrate in with Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel plus existing security stacks that the customer may have. We're proven in very large and complex environments, and we're part of a key that will help address issues for the CISO who currently has no visibility into their IoT or OT operational risks. Thank you.